Hi guys, Steve the Transit Camper. Thanks for clicking on my channel. Uh, we're going to have a look at the uh, power problems in the van tomorrow. So first job, we're going to put the batteries on charge overnight. So we'll just plug her in, get the batteries up to voltage, and then we'll have a look tomorrow what the problem is. So I've got a very simple hook up at the back of the van. I just connected that up and I'll make sure the power's on and those batteries will charge overnight. And we'll have a look tomorrow when we've got full voltage. Right guys, so it's the second day now. Uh, I've charged the batteries up and we are running at what we got 12.8 on the uh, old voltage meter so we're going to get the seat up and have a look and see if we've got a parasitic drain on something we've installed so that's probably going to be the culprit here let's have a look so i should point out i've got the diesel heater running to keep us warm i have got baby in the van with me because she often comes in and uh, makes some suggestions from the <laughs> from the back seat uh, so that's why it only says 12.8 it was, wasn't it? 12.8 on the current. I am actually charging at the same time, so it's it's about 13.6 when uh, everything's switched off. But we're keeping the heating on because it's freezing. So sorry about the noise of the fan, but there you go. So these are the fuses of everything that I run off the van. I've got to label that one up, actually. Not sure what it does. Uh, so... What we're going to be doing now is seeing if there's a parasitic drain on any of these. So we'll just have to whip them out and put our meter between the two terminals and see if they're drawing any current when they're not being used. So I'm just starting with one that I know I can uh, see is working properly. So this one is the light when we get into the van. We can just switch it on there and it gives us one single LED light so we can get ourselves sorted when we come in on a dark night. So I've took that off and I've switched it off and on my amp meter I've got uh, zero. When I switch it on and connect my other end of my lead to the terminal, the red one I've got 0.7 amps. So that tells me that the method I'm using is fine and that that one is switching off and there's no parasitic leak. So what I'll do now is go for the thing that I think might be doing it, which is the new horn that I fitted underneath the van. So the thing that I think is leaking or causing that parasitic uh, drain is this fuse, which is the new horn that I fitted underneath the van. That's almost like a panic alarm, if you like. Sorry, it's this fuse, the top fuse. So what I'm going to do is I've got my meter on amps. I've only got the 10 amp option. There's nothing lower on this meter. So I'll put my live wire on the component or the live going to the component. And then I'm coming back to where it gets its power source from. Bit of a squeeze. I've got 0.47 on that, constantly drawing. Which isn't an awful lot, but if the van is standing for 7, 10 days, that's going to be completely drawing your battery all the time. So you are going to notice an effect on that. And although every time I get in the van it says 12.6 volts when I go camping or campering, whatever you want to call it, I do see a drain on the battery after about an hour when I've been using things. So 0.47 on there. I will test a few other things while I'm at it though. So this third one down that I'm on now is the fridge. So red to that side. That's nothing essentially 0 0.04 so that's nothing and the fridge is off at this point uh, let's just switch the fridge on that's with the fridge on it goes up to 0 0.4 obviously there's no big draw there but you can see that that's how much power that would take switch it off 
back to nothing. So the fridge is okay. And then this fuse that I'm on now is the sink tap. So it powers the pump. Oops. It's off at the minute. It's got 0.17 there. So I thought it's a bit high really. Switch it on, goes up to 0.49. But I suppose these are such little numbers that it's not a problem really. Okay, so I've gone through everything. I haven't bored you by showing every single one check, but all of them are like 0.01 or 0.09 or 1, 0.1. Uh, but this, which I use as my emergency alarm, is running at 0.4 amps. So I've left that disconnected for now. And what I'll do is leave the batteries to continue charging, get them up to full speed. So they are charging in a minute. And then uh, because I don't use that very often, I'll probably just put a switch on it so it can be permanently switched off when I'm not using it. So I'll just mount a switch by the side of it. And uh, I think we'll call it for that. So we'll charge up and we'll have a look later on when we go camping. See if we've still got the problem. So that's the way I uh, look for a parasitic leak. Uh, you might have another way. I mean, I could have taken the main, go into the fuse box and just tested every circuit and seen what the total amps being drawn out is when it's at rest, but uh, chose to do them individually. But uh, if you've got another idea, let us know in the comments. I'm always keen to learn. But at the moment, I decided that it's going to be that speaker underneath that uh, it's like a tannoy system and an alarm system. I put it in for a laugh last summer and uh, I've disconnected that for now. And if that kills the problem over the next few camps, then I've got nothing to worry about and I'll just put a switch on it. If uh, I still have the same problem, then I'm still looking for something else. So now that I tried that method, I thought, I thought after, I wonder whether, what the total current is coming from this. So I've taken my main feed to my fuse box and measured the amperage draw between that to the main fuse box when everything's off and I've still got 0.14 of an amp. Which isn't a lot, but it's, I mean, it should be nothing in theory. But I went through them all and I've took each fuse out and the current doesn't change. It's still 0.14 when you take that one out and put it back in. Same for that, same for that, same for that, same for that. All the way through until I get to the heater, the diesel heater fuse. I've pulled that out and the current drops from 0.14 to 0.04. So that must be the current that it uses just to keep the display on which in my shed I've got the same diesel heater and if I don't charge the battery I've got the battery on constant charge but originally I used to charge the battery once and then put it in the shed and then bring it out every month that it needed charging and sometimes if I didn't even go in the shed for the whole week or the whole month it would be flat the battery and I always wondered why and and the display was off so if it's using 0.1 of an amp it's not it's not mega amounts of current but it is a draw and you'd rather have no draw than some draw so I've got to bear in mind that the Chinese heater just to have that display on uses 0.14 and everything else is zero except for that top one which we've already said which is that uh, alarm system that I fitted, that tannoy system that I fitted for a bit of fun. And that also uses... Uh, can't remember now. But that also uses some current. So with that disconnected and the Chinese heater display off, if that fuse was out, I would have no draw whatsoever. It would be zero. So that's interesting. So maybe I don't need to have that Chinese heater display on when I'm not using the van. So a switch on that might make sense, really. I'll have to have a think about that.
So I've learned some interesting things today. So just this display, let me show you. Just that display to keep it on when you're not using the van for a week. I mean, it's the wrong time now because I've switched it off. But just to keep that on is 0.14 of an amp. Well, that's a current you can do without wasting, really. So there's absolutely no need to have that display on when I'm not using the van or the heater, to be honest. So definitely going to order a switch for that and have that switched off. Definitely going to order a switch for that uh, Tannoy system. So we'll keep it in. It's a bit of fun when we go on holiday, really, to be honest. So we'll put a switch on that or we could run it through the same switch. And the other thing was that the tap for the sink, that seems to be drawing current when it shouldn't be drawing any current really when it's not being used. So what I think I'm gonna do is buy an isolator switch that just straight away from the main battery, go into a switch, out the switch, into the bottom of the fuse box. And then between camps, just switch it all off because it doesn't need to be on. Uh, and then I'll be charging the batteries as I drive, which it does anyway, through the split charger. So uh, I think that'll solve the problem, really. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So you've been watching Steve the Transit Camper, playing around with batteries, which I tend to do every year. I have a new set of problems. <laughs> and I'm going to fit a main isolator on it all. I'm going to go and order one now from Amazon. Catch you later.